So I noticed that when I was messing with my carabiner here, the snapping sound of the metal makes her a little bit uncomfortable. So she's just a little bit audio sensitive and that's part of being hyper aware. Good girl. She is very smart though. And she honestly seems more relaxed today than she was yesterday. Generally a dog that's a little bit leery of strangers, especially one with I mean, she's got a good disposition. She's just a nervous type dog. Come on, sweetheart. Good girl. Do you see how she's looking at me? And she's just kind of loosely following. She's got that nice little loose jog. The tail is up. And the tail is kind of tightly wagging. Which is a sign of like authoritative posture. If you will. Good girl. So I'm not going to look her directly in the eyes right now. Good girl. Come on. And part of it may also be, that's just where her tail comes out of her body. Like, her tail comes up high. But if you notice, her tail is stiff. Good. There's a nice little loose wag. That's nice. Can you come right here? No, you don't want to follow me. That's okay. Good girl. She is not used to being told what to do. <laughs> come on. And she's not sure she wants to be told what to do. And that's okay. I can appreciate that. I don't like being told really what to do either. However, I am not a pupper. Good girl. I'm going to show her that hand is empty. Let me see if I can just take this leash. Hi, sweetheart. Good girl. She hasn't been quite as jumpy on me today as she was yesterday. I'm going to see if she wants to go potty. Hi, you just going to sit down and be so pretty over there? Good girl. And I'm going to shorten this leash up just a little bit. So I'm going to set this phone. <laughs> Is that something for you? Is that phone for you? Good girl. And I'm going to watch her. I'm going to take an audible breath as I'm just kind of messing around with this. Because if you notice, she sees everything. And that's part of her hypervigilance. Hi. And the more vigilant a dog is, so you see how that snapped? Good girl. The more vigilant a dog is, the more vigilant we have to be in order to keep up with them. And that's difficult. Because sometimes our dogs see stuff, hear stuff, and smell stuff, and we're like, what on earth are you looking at? Pepper. And this is why I connect my leash to me. So she, I've lost her attention, and that's okay. A lot of the time, the smarter a dog, the smarter we have to move in order to keep up with them. However, Pepper, good girl. I don't want to ask her beyond her means. So yes, yes, she wants to immediately go out and tell me where we're going. That's not really what we're going to be doing. Hi, sweet. Come here. So you notice how anytime she gets ahead of me, I just turn around and I make a nice little circle. She wants to go this way. Come on. Part of this is confusion. Good girl. Good girl. See how she's kind of hesitant to follow me? She doesn't know me. Sit. Good girl. And when she gets to the position I want her in, which is, I'm not really worried about what direction she's facing right now. But whenever her toes are in line with my toes, okay, let's walk. Good girl. This is what I like. Good, and we're going to sit. Very good. I think once she realizes that I am not someone she needs to be concerned about, because like I said, y'all haven't had her that long. And over a year of unknown history, it's okay, I lost her. She caught a smell. I'm going to hold on to that. You're an incredibly strong girl. Yes, good girl. She circled back to me. I like that. But a year, over a year of unknown history is a lot. See how she's kind of hesitant when my hand goes in my pocket. She backs away from me just a tad. There's a treat in that hand. See, wow. You can see the uncertainty in her little face. And she has such a sweet face. And again, I don't want her right behind me. I don't know her. And at this point, I don't 100% trust her. Just because I don't know her. Same way with, like, when I work with a new horse. I don't innately trust an animal, and they don't innately trust me. That's okay. That is intelligent for an animal to not innately trust 
innately and blindly trust without a reason. Good. Easy. And she's a little bit bouncy. She's popping up off her front feet a little bit. But you know what? She's staying relatively close to where I want her in like a nice heel position. She's thinking. You can see her little brain moving. Good girl. Of course, you don't have a little brain, do you, sweetheart? You are very smart. Mm -hmm. Good girl. I'm going to give her just a little treaty poop. Good girl. I'm going to put the treats back in my pocket. Hi. That's pretty cool, huh? And I'm going to kneel down kind of with my side to her. And I'm just going to show her that I want to get this out from under her foot. Good. Perfect. Hey, Pepper. Good girl. I just want to pet you a little bit. Good girl. And I am keeping her like she's not right up in my space. Hi, sweetheart. I like that. I like that she's not right on top of me. Good girl. See how the tail is a little bit more relaxed? But again, I don't want her right behind me. Hi. You're caught. Can I have that? Good girl. I have almost no doubt she'll be a dog that can untangle herself from a leash once she's taught that, like... Yeah, there you go. She does pretty good at it anyway. Good girl. I'm going to stand up real gentle. Good. I can tell she's definitely more loose today than she was yesterday. Good girl. Come on. Now, there's a car coming. I can hear it, so I'm going to lead her away. Because cars... Honestly, cars are the most dangerous thing in the world to a dog. Other people, other dogs, not near as dangerous as a car. And, obviously, that probably makes sense. Come on. Oh, yes, we like cars. I got a good hand on that lead. Oh, good. Okay, here we go. Of course, they're stopping. Hey, how are you? Happy Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Good girl. That's okay. Good girl. As soon as she's moving away in the direction that I like. Good girl. See how that ants her up? A lot. Hey, Pepper. Good girl. We That's why we walk away. Is because you see how she strained towards the car? That's another really important thing about having a dog in a good position when you're walking. Because if they're too far out in front of you, you have zero control over the dog. So there's another vehicle. Good girl. And I know she is in front of me right now. We are not asking for perfection at this present moment. Also... You can't really see the whole stance that my body in, my body is in, but I am pointed. Good girl, I like that she shook the tension out of her body just a little bit. Good girl, I like that. I do, I like that. Good, let's walk. Good girl. And like I said, right now when we're just learning, when we're just learning new things, good girl. We want to be really, really liberal with our treating. We want to give lots and lots of treats to let her know, Pepper, good girl, that she is doing a good job. So one of the things that I meant to mention yesterday is when there's ever a behavior that I'm like, like that jumping, ignore it until it stops. When she is sitting, I am going to reward that because that is the behavior that I do want. And her leg is caught, so I'm always going to stop when her leg is caught. She gave me a little bit of a side eye there. A little bit uncomfortable with me getting that close to her space. That's okay. Good girl, Pepper. Good job. And as soon as she's untangled, we're going to get right back to it. But we're not ever going to be in any kind of rush. Come on. Good. Because, come on, when we get rushed... And even if it's just something we're trying to, like, cover up. Oh, we're not going to feel rushed. Oh, we're not going to feel rushed. Your dog knows if you're lying to them. <laughs> because they can smell your body chemicals. Good. Come on, Pepper. Come on, Pepper. And you don't have to have a service dog for a dog to... Whoa, Mama. For a dog to be able to read your body chemicals. They can innately do that. There you go. It's okay. That one kind of dropped. I didn't mean to drop that treat on the ground, but it's fine. So we definitely want to break the car chasing habit. Which is also why we're not on the road and we're still in your driveway. Because like I said, I don't know this dog. I'm going to pull my hand out of her face when that car drives by. And I'm going to get a good hand on that leash. Good girl. 
So we like mail trucks less than we care for other cars. Okay, come here. You need to untangle your little laggy poo here. This is another thing that a harness will help with is um, because it will be connected on her back, it won't be up under her feet quite as much. So I'm just gonna flop this around like that to where it's in a better position. She thinks there's still a little treat or something on the ground there. Hey, Pepper. Good girl. Good girl. And if she had really not wanted to look at me right there, that would have been okay. See how her nose went straight back to the ground? Again, these are nitpicky things, but if you're not going to be nitpicky, you might as well not train a dog. <laughs> because being nitpicky, good girl, and asking for as close to we can get as to perfection as possible, good girl, and only rewarding exactly what we want, that is what gets us a really well-trained dog. Good girl. I'd be very interested to know what happened to this dog before y'all got her. Come on. Come on. Pepper. Good girl, honey. Good girl. See, as soon as we start going back towards your house, she's like, oh, we're going in. Well, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Good girl. We're just going to move around. Good girl. Come on. And for a dog that is leery of strangers... It is going to take longer for her to warm up to me than it would for some other dogs that weren't necessarily leery of people. So, you know, like a puppy that's never had any kind of bad experiences with a person. They have no reason to ever fear a person. A dog with an unknown background, you have no idea what may have happened to her. Especially because she seems like a dog that's emotionally sensitive. Good girl! So she's getting ahead of me, so I'm gonna... Good girl, Pepper. Can you come right here? Good. This is just helping to teach her that when you listen to me, you get good things. You get tasty, tasty little treats. Good girl. Can you sit? Very good, Pepper. You see how she automatically wants to walk off? Patience is a virtue. I hear a car coming. I'm going to walk her away. Sit. Good. It's okay. Can you sit? Good girl. Do you see how she's getting further from me? She is reaching that mental capacity of where she is done working. You can always tell if you pay really close attention to a dog because you will see a slight difference in disposition. She is generally quite willing Good girl. She's just unsure. But when you see her getting more and more distracted, good girl. When you see her getting more and more hyper vigilant, I'm just going to keep my hand on this leash because she is so strong. Good girl. Hey, Pepper. Good girl. Good. Can you sit? Do you see how the more I ask of her, the longer I ask her to pay attention? Good. The more uncertain she becomes. Good girl. And that's okay. That's totally, totally fine. I am not into pushing a dog before they are ready. She doesn't know me. <laughs> She's met me a total of three times now. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And just like people can have trust issues... Dogs have trust issues, too. It's okay. And it is up to us as their people. Good girl. Come on, Pepper. Good job, honey. It's up to us as their people to not break that trust. Sit. Good. And to form a mutually trusting and respectful relationship. Good. That's all. Good girl. Can you sit? That's nice. Good baby. Good baby. I'm just not going to walk over here. Good girl. I know. It's like a different planet. Whoa. See how far ahead of me she is? She's ahead of me by an entire body length. If something like a car or something like a dog, a deer, good girl. I don't know how she feels about squirrels. But with as highly reactive as she is, I assume she's not a huge fan. 
which is fine. My dogs eat squirrels too. Good girl. And I'm letting her think. Whoa. Good girl, Pepper. Good. But like I said, the further a dog is from you, the less control you're going to have of them. And if she were to pop out of a collar or a harness when she's an entire body length away from you, you're not going to get her back. Good girl, Pepper. Good girl, Pepper. Good girl, Pepper. And that's also something she and I are going to work on. And that'll come later. It's okay. Not a huge fan of me tromping around behind her in these leaves. That's all right. What do you smell? What's over there? Good girl. That looks like she needs to go potty. Oh, I'm going to plant myself. Ooh, you're strong. Whenever she leans against me, plant yourself into the ground. Sink your heels down into the dirt. And be a tree. Be a tree, be a tree, be a tree. Wow, you're strong. Good girl. Good girl. And that's that yielding to pressure when she comes back to me. Good girl. And she releases that tension on the leash. This is also one of the reasons that I like to do circles with dogs. Is because eventually it will connect with them. Like I said, this is super early for her training, so if it doesn't connect with her yet, it's totally fine. But she will learn that when you you are in front of me, hi, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to put you back behind me. Yeah, we're not moving when we're arm wrestling, are we? So she may also be a dog that treats may not always necessarily work to deter like to get her attention back and to redirect her that is another reason i like to do circles with dogs especially ones with a whole lot of energy like her eventually we'll be able to get her to move in a consistent circle hey pepper good girl around us to help her expel some energy you see people do this with horses as well it is called lunging most dog trainers will not teach this skill, unless they are probably also horse people, but I love it. All of my dogs and all of my clients' dogs know how to lunge. Come on. Come on. Good girl. We're walking the direction I want. She's not really sure about it. That's okay. Come on. Oh, you like sticks? Hey, Pepper. Let's stand on the end of it, because we're not out here to play right now. Hey, Pepper. Good girl. Oh, you like a whistle sound? That's cool. I'm going to step her past the stick. Good girl. Take it. That's very nice, sweetheart. I'm going to show her that there's another treat in this hand. We're going to walk forward. Good girl. Sit. I like that she's not super grabby when it comes to treats. Some dogs... Good girl, you like the whistle sound. I like that you like the whistle sound. Good. And if you also notice, I don't use a clicker. I don't like a clicker because I can make that sound with my mouth. And that's just something else that I have to carry around with me when I'm working a dog. You have leaves stuck all over your butt. You are a leaf butt. Come on. Good girl. Sit. Good. You see her starting to pant? It is not near hot enough out here for her to be hot physically. When you see a dog start to pant and you know that they are not physically hot, you know that their brain is moving. And that is what is making them warm. Good, 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 good. Because coming out here and just being on a leash or like going outside to go pee or poop for a dog, you know, just going outside to have fun, maybe chew on a stick or something. Sit. Good girl. That's the difference between going to school to take the SAT and going to school to go play on the playground. Good girl. Come on. And we really want her to start thinking. Good girl. We want her to start using that brain. Good girl. And I will use whatever sound the dog likes the best. That is also another reason I'm not a huge fan of clickers. Some dogs are terrified of them. I have two dogs that are actually terrified of the sound that a clicker makes. Good girl. Come on. Do you see how when I'm asking her to follow me, it makes her uncertain? Come on. Sit. It's because she's like, 
Who is you asking me to do something? You're a good girl. I hear a car coming. I'm going to put the treats away. Hey, Pepper. Well, no, I'm not. Hey, Pepper, I'm going to try something. I'm going to throw that one on the ground. Good girl. Hey, Pepper. I've got a firm hand on that leash. Good girl. A really firm one. Good girl. And I plant myself into the ground. Good. Hey, Pepper. Good. I'm going to show her a treat. She came to me when I said her name. Good girl. So it seems like cars are not as big of a deal as like delivery trucks. Anything with air brakes, one of my dogs is like, uh, no. Good girl, I'm gonna lead her back this way so that she is behind me and not directly in front of me. Go ahead, take it. You see how she kind of hesitated? It's because she sees that. Hey, Pepper. <whistles> that was not as strong of a reaction that time. Good girl. Good. And that's just to break up that thought. I'm just interrupting her process of thinking. Whoop. Good. By throwing something tasty in front of her face. Good. Because honestly, she can probably smell it as it flies through the air in front of her face. I know she can, actually. Dogs have over 3 million scent receptors in their nose. We have a fraction of that number. Hi, good girl. She glanced towards me when there was a sound over that way. I like that. I'm going to reward it. I'm going to get a good hand on that leash because we're not going that way. Good girl. And when she does start trusting me a little bit more and when she does start responding more regularly and once we get her on a harness, because honestly, right at this point, I would hate for her to see a car, a dog, a deer, a squirrel, something like that, and tag the end of this leash really hard and accidentally hurt her neck. Dogs are very, very fragile in the neck area, which is why I don't ever generally recommend walking one that is not already trained to leash walk on a collar. Good. Or even dogs that are strong on a leash, we always want to go for a harness or a gentle leader, but I like a harness better because the gentle leader is not a permanent solution. You hear a squirrel over there. See, that's cool. You see the leaves blowing around. Good girl. Nice and easy. Good. I acknowledge when she acknowledges. Good. That's all. Good girl, Pepper. She doesn't care about that sound. She doesn't care about that sound right now either. Good girl. That's okay. Sometimes we are not going to be able to get our dog's attention. And when we can't get her attention, the worst thing we can do is continue to pressure her with our voice Good girl, because she's just going to get more tense and she's going to get more confused. That's what? Because it's like, if you're distracted or say you're anxious already. Good. We're going to treat that when she sits. Say you're anxious already and someone starts yelling at you to do a bunch of different stuff or even just telling you to do a whole bunch of different things at once. That's going to overwhelm your brain and you're going to shut down. Either that or you're going to get really confused and you're going to lash out. Good. And she seems to be she shuts down first when she is uncomfortable and then if she is pushed good that's when I bet she'd lash out but also that's where the self-control and the impulse control on her part <laughs> is going to come in because she's going to have to learn how to calm baby don't eat that pepper good girl she's going to have to learn how to calm herself down <laughs> Good girl. Good. Can I have this out from underneath your little toes? Good girl. Good girl. And I'm going to walk her away from the cactus because we're not going to eat that. You want to smell my car? No? Okay. And you notice how just that real quick, like, eh, eh, that deterred her and that got her feet off of your vehicle. This is a dog that is going to be sensitive emotionally. Good girl. Good girl. You are so pretty. You have the sweetest little eyes. Good girl. I have no doubt that this dog, once we work past her over-excitement issues and get her to where she can calm herself back down, she is going to be a fantastic dog. I do not think this dog is going to have residual issues for the rest of her life, but it is going to be really important while she is still getting used to living in your home because really 
you know, it can take a dog up to seven, eight months to really get comfortable in a home setting. Sometimes it can take even longer depending on the dog. It's all up to them and it's all at their speed. Hey, Pepper. So I don't really like how far ahead of me she is. As you can see, she's way over there and she's locking. She has stopped. She is poised. Whoop. You see how she really wants to go that way? We're not going to do it. We're actually going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to do that high pitch whistle. I'm going to make a different sound. Good. I'm going to move. Because if we want our dog to move, we should move. If we, are, we want the dog to stop, we should stop moving. Good girl. Good. We're going to break up that thought process. I've got a hold of this leash. I don't know what it is she sees over there. You're okay, honey. Do you see how jumpy she is? That's okay. The worst thing I could do right now would be reach down and touch her because I might get bit. Good girl. I'm going to jackpot reward that. She came to me because she wanted to. Good girl. This is also not a dog that I feel comfortable getting on the ground with just yet. Good. Pretty soon I feel like I'll be comfortable enough with her to sit on the ground and have her face to face with me. Good girl. Good girl. Because I really think she's going to be one of these babies that once she realizes that we are not here to hurt her, we're actually really going to be here to help her and that training is fun. Listening to people gets you lots of treats and it gets you affection. Hi, sweetest. You're such a good girl. I don't want you behind me. But you also don't want her behind guests. Hey, don't use that. Silly. Hey, Pepper. Hey, Pepper. Hi, silly. Hi, silly, sweet girl. Good. It's okay. I'm just going to reach down. I'm going to take that off your leg. She's like, don't touch my leg. Okay, that's fine. Do you see how she's not walking into my hand when I'm extending it for her to, like, come into because I want to pet her? If she doesn't come towards me, she doesn't want me to touch her. And it's going to be really important, especially for a dog that seems to like their personal space, to give them that. Because just like a person that doesn't want you in their face, the more you get in their face, probably the more you're going to agitate them. A dog is the exact same way. Hey, Pepper. So I'm going to extend this hand. She's, she hears the birds that are just bumping around in those bushes over there. I'm not going to try to touch her at all right now. If you ever see that she is overstimulated, good girl, that's nice. That's nice, she came right to me. Good girl. So now I'm going to show you. Hi. So now that she's not hyper-focused on something, don't eat that. Pepper. See how she's pulling against me? Good girl. You see how she looked away and kind of pulled her head out of my hand? She don't want me to touch her. That's okay. If your dog leans into you and pushes into your hand, that means they actually do want you to pet them. A lot of people misconstrue a dog's signals. Good. Good girl, Pepper. I'm going to reach this hand down. She just wants to touch it with her nose, and then she's done. That's okay. That's all I want is that acknowledgement and that touch with the nose. We're not going over there. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Good girl. Good girl. And this seems ridiculously easy, but she needs to trust me more. Good. She needs to trust me more than she does before I'm comfortable leaving your yard. Good girl. You're okay. Good job, honey. Good girl. Also, I definitely want to wait until she's got a harness on before I walk her near a road. Just in case. Safety is always first. Say safety is always first. Good girl. Now I'm just going to let her cool down. We're going to find a stick. See if she wants to chew on a stick because she seemed to want to do that earlier. Girl. And I'm just going to let her think. I'm just going to let her... Hi, sweetheart. I'm just going to let her think about what we were doing and kind of meander around let her do dog things. Good girl. Because she cooperated with me for a while, and I like that. And so I'm going to cooperate and let her do what she wants now. She did what I want, and we have to reciprocate that. You do what I want, we do what you want. Good pee pee. Hi. Good girl. You sit. Good 